All right, so we had some fun with our basketball game. Let's switch to American football now and try to simulate getting a field goal. So the idea of a field goal is that you're trying to kick the ball in between these two. Uh, they're called the uprights, and you have to make it within that rectangle. So it's a little bit different because it's oriented this way instead of this way. But what I want to show you is that the physics, the coding, the geometry, all the stuff we need to put in works exactly the same way with just a few adjustments. The first thing we'll do is uh, call this the uprights instead. And instead of a ring, I need to have a, a pattern like this, right? Uh, so let's think about how we might do that. Uh, what I actually need here, set of beams instead of just one object. So let's actually make a horizontal beam. There we go. And so instead of a ring, this one's going to be a cylinder. And uh, let's see. So it's axis. Let's see. If we're kicking it this way, right, on the screen, then the horizontal beam is going to be pointing this way. It's going to be pointing along the z-axis. So I just need to change this axis vector from 0 to 1. Uh, radius of 2 is going to be a bit thick because it needs. this is the thickness going this way. Uh, it does not have a thickness. Uh, actually, excuse me, what we want on this is a size vector. And so we'll, the x direction is the, the first component is going to be the length of the cylinder. So let's make that a 1. And then let's have a uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. I think that will create what we want. Uh, oops, I need to actually give this an appropriate name. You can't put spaces in your names. Horizontal beam. So horizontal beam dot pause equals vector 250, let's make it two. These things are usually farther away than they are tall. So let's make this 10, 2, 0. And I just want to check on the visual for this. So I'm going to comment everything out just to make sure that turned out the way I wanted. Yep, there it is. There's the horizontal beam. That's a little bit far, Brian. Let's uncomment, uh, excuse me. Let's uncomment, make that a little bit closer. And let's make it a 6. How about that? Okay, so now what I want to check, I want to check for, let's just first check for whether the ball has gone over that beam, right? So let's see about this. So instead of checking on the basket, check for whether we made a field goal, because the rest of it stays the same, right? The physics is the same, the setup is the same. We're just checking for whether we scored, right? Um, so we're going to check for, now. so I'm not interested in are there y values close, now I'm interested in are their x values close, right? Because this thing is now going to be moving along the x-axis. So let's check for whether their x-axes are close, or x values, excuse me. And so all I have to do is change these x, y's, and x's. Again, never start coding from scratch. Always start with a code that does similar to the thing you want. And then we want is the ball's position within the, uh, this is going to be the horizontal beams position. Uh, let's see, is it within, uh, is it within the radius? No, so that question doesn't make any sense. So is the ball, we want it above the horizontal beam. And this is where we're comparing their y values. I don't really need their separation anymore. I just need if the ball's position in the y direction is greater than the horizontal beam dot pause dot y. So I'm comparing their y positions. Okay. And it actually doesn't matter what direction the velocity goes. You can have that on the upswing. You can have it on the downswing. Uh, so we can just make this score true. There are other um, requirements that we'll work in in a second. But right now, let's just run to try this out. Uh, uh oh, I still have a basket somewhere. Where do I still have a basket? Let's do a control F. Oh, right, right, right. This is now horizontal beam. You were probably shouting at me about that from the future. Run. And there it goes. And lo and behold, we do score there, right? We're making it over there. Now, the other, the other issue is that there's a maximum height to this, right? Because I need to be able to get this within a, basically within a rectangle. So let's make the top of this now. Um, I probably should call that bottom beam, but we'll just call this top. So we'll call this the top. There's not really a beam there because you want the football to be able to go through, but it's worth, it's, it's, it's worth modeling with this. Uh, so let's add on another cylinder for the top. 
And it needs to go in the same location, it just needs to go above. So let's do copy and paste here. And so we'll call this one top.pause. And we just move it up. Um, you can look up the actual values if you want. That would make a great assignment. And so what I need to be able to check for, see, this would not be a legit field goal because it didn't, it didn't reach. It, it went above the top there. So, although I, I admittedly, I haven't seen that happen too terribly often um, because usually they're, they're, they're just barely making it there. Um, but it's, it's worth having it in there for the sake of the, for the sake of the simulation. So let's also check for if ball.pause.y is less than the top.pause.y. Actually, you know what? No, we're not going to write it that way. There is a cool way to do this. I learned this recently in Python. You can make multiple less than signs or greater than signs at once. So I can have top.pause.y greater than ball.pause.y greater than horizontalbeam.pause.y. That is a legit legal thing in Python that will work. And I've always thought that was so cool. Learned about that about a year ago. Um, pretty, pretty excited about it. So basically this is saying if ball.pause.y is between top.pause.y and horizontalbeam.pause.y. All right, let's try again. We should not get a score this time. And lo and behold, we did not. No score. Isn't that cool? Just by adding in that one extra little piece, it added in the extra condition that we needed. So this is a fun way to play around with field goals here. Now there is another aspect of the field goal. Oh, you know what? I need to get these things centered. So one of the interesting things about the cylinder is that its position is actually the mid, is actually the end, not the midpoint. So let's just adjust those positions a little bit. Those will need to be threes. No, excuse me, that'll need to be a, what is their size there? That'll need to be a negative, needs to be negative half of the length. So let's make the length two and make this thing a negative one to send them back along the negative Z axis a little bit. <clears throat> Just since we are looking at this thing in 3D, there it goes. All right, there's my uprights, there we go. And then the other piece you would have would be the left beam and the right beam. So why don't we add those in? So let's go in and add right equals cylinder axis. Now these are going to point upward. So I want these axes to be in the Y direction. I want their size. I want them to just fit in between those. So I want their length to be whatever this separation is. So that is going to be 2 comma... Uh, 0 0.1 comma 0 0.1, that's fine. Comma color equals color dot green. And then do the same thing with the left. Cool. And now I just need to set their positions, right? Because if I run this like it is, those are out there somewhere, right? So I need to move those back in place to finish the rectangle. So let's do right dot pause. All right, let's just look at the diagram. Where is this gonna need to go? This is gonna need to go here at these endpoints. So that's gonna be like, uh, they're gonna have the same X because going that way is fine. They're going to have the bottom value here. So the lower of those two. And then they also need to be out along the Z by this much. So by one. And then same thing here, move it along the Z, negative one. Almost. Oh, 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 I, I, I changed right position twice instead of left position. There we go. Remember, you are allowed to make as many mistakes in a code as you want. You only have to get it right the one time. Okay, cool. Now that we've got our field goal there, let's try to actually make a score here. Uh, I let's try slowing it down just a little bit. All right, let's try speeding it up just a little bit. Boop, all right, we made a score, nice in there. Uh, the other piece you would add into this would be the ball's motion along the Z axis, right? Like you put in a little bit of a component there or you work in three-dimensional spherical coordinates where you can give two angles. Um, that's a great extension project, so I'll leave that uh, for you. But you would have to um, you would have to change the velocity, because uh, obviously if you just give it zero Z velocity, it's going to meet that requirement every time. Then maybe you give it a little bit of Z velocity too, or maybe a random Z velocity. That would be kind of cool. Uh, but then what you can do is add in a check to make sure it's between the two uh, uprights along the Z axis there.